Hey, hey, we are here in the kitchen. I've got all my pantry staples out from my video last week and we are putting together all kinds of things that we can make with just those ingredients from last week's video. Um, there's lots of good stuff in here and let's get started. Two tablespoons of paprika. Two teaspoons of oregano. I'm just gonna use Italian seasoning. One and a half teaspoons of cumin one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of onion powder. This is dried shallots. I don't care, I just use it. It's basically the same, I think. I don't know. And then it's half a teaspoon of cayenne, or if you want it spicier or not as spicy, you can just adjust that how you want it. And then you just mix it together. I gotta get one of those little tiny baby whisks like I see other people have on YouTube. And that's it, that is chili powder. It smells amazing. I'm gonna throw this into a little jar. All right, so I don't have um, a funnel, so I'm just gonna use this plate. There we go. All right, this is taco seasoning. I'm gonna use the same bowl because it's a lot of the same ingredients. So we've got one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of the onion powder, quarter teaspoon of oregano, I'm using the Italian seasoning again, quarter teaspoon of cayenne, one teaspoon of the chili powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of cumin, quarter teaspoon of pepper, and then it says a quarter teaspoon of salt. You can put this in or leave it out, depending on if you want to have the salt right in it or if you want to salt your stuff later so for the taco seasoning this will replace like one packet that you would buy at the store and then if you wanted fajita seasoning the recipes that i found are basically the same they just leave out the cayenne pepper so it's a little more mild um, i can link both recipes down below but i always just use taco seasoning for fajitas too it tastes so similar I don't really worry about it. And then when I make taco seasoning, I always make big batches. Um, I went to Costco and I bought one of the big containers of taco seasoning just to keep refilling it because I liked the big, huge container. And then that's what I've been doing now is I just make like 10 of this recipe and pour it into that container. And then if you are mixing a new batch with an old batch, just shake it up so they're homogenous. There you go. Okay, so I was hoping I wouldn't have to do this because I thought I had covered everything in my last video, but I had my parsley sitting out on the counter, and I was going to mention that if cilantro is not your thing, or, you know, maybe you just don't feel like that's what you need, parsley was my honorable mention that you could swap out for the cilantro for about the same price because you can get one of these at Walmart for a dollar or at Dollar Tree. That is what we're using for this ranch seasoning. And I just wanted to throw it in there that it was on the counter and I forgot to mention it. So here it is, parsley. It's wonderful, I love it. I use it in a lot of cooking. This is ranch seasoning with no buttermilk. And we are gonna start with that parsley and it's gonna be a quarter cup of parsley. Then we've got dill. We're gonna use one tablespoon of dill and an extra teaspoon of dill. Two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of the onion powder, one teaspoon of dried chives, one teaspoon of black pepper, and then one teaspoon of salt. Again, if you want to salt later, that's fine. And now for this one, if you want it more of just a powder, you throw it in the little chopper, which I am going to do so that all these parsley pieces and chive pieces are broken down a little more. There, look at that a nice powder consistency. This one is cinnamon sugar. I am out, so we're gonna make it with our pantry staples. We've got ground cinnamon, and we've got sugar. And I think I'll do um, a quarter cup of each and just see what it looks like. I don't have like a recipe for this, but uh, it's just cinnamon and sugar. And if you like it more on the cinnamon side, you can put more cinnamon. If you want it more sweet, then just throw more sugar in it. Really doesn't matter. 
All right, so I've got this mixed in equal parts. I think that looks fine. Probably looks, oh, wow, there's a difference. This one has way more sugar. I'm not gonna add more sugar. I think half sugar, half cinnamon is perfectly fine. Yeah, I filled the container about halfway. All right, so the next thing we're gonna make is cake flour. Really simple, um, use it for cakes, obviously, and uh, it's got like a lighter, I don't know, texture to it, and it makes your cakes rise a little better, so um, if you use cake flour, you can make it really easily at home. Okay, so here I've got one cup of all-purpose flour, and to make cake flour, we're gonna remove two tablespoons of the flour, and then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of cornstarch. So you'll still have one cup of flour, but it'll be cake flour. Just make sure it's all put together right. If I had another bowl, I'd probably sift it. Probably should sift it. All right, so I'm just gonna store this in a bag. And sift it right into here. Took a little finagling. That is cake flour. Yeah. All right, so the next one's also a flour. We're gonna do self-rising flour, which I use quite a bit, like for beer bread. That's my main use for it, but there's a lot of recipes that use it. Um, I think I've made biscuits with self-rising flour, and it's a good one to have on hand if you don't really like to make breads with yeast, and it's pretty simple. All right, so this is self-rising flour, and I'm no dummy twice, so I'm gonna sift it into there first. All right, one cup of all-purpose flour one and a half teaspoons of baking soda and then half a teaspoon of salt and that is self-rising flour so this is going to be garlic salt and onion salt basically you're just taking garlic powder and salt or onion powder and salt and mixing them together to the saltiness that you like I'm gonna do a tablespoon of the powder half a tablespoon of the salt and just see how that looks. I would personally rather have it more on the garlic side than the salt side because you can always add more salt, but this is the one that I bought from Walmart and this looks like it's basically just salt. See the difference? So maybe I'll go another, another quarter tablespoon of salt. So I think that looks great. So I'll do it one tablespoon one tablespoon to three quarters of a tablespoon. There we go. And again, if you're mixing like a new batch and an old batch, or if you're mixing one with a store-bought one, just shake it up so it's all the same. Garlic salt. Do the same thing for the onion salt. One of the things I started doing when I started getting into just making different spices is saving the little glass jars. I think it's a nicer option than ordering a bunch of them. You're obviously not gonna get like a ton of them at once, but I think they're cute and they're glass. So I just wash them out and then like now I don't have a container for the onion salt cause I don't have any. Um, so I'm just gonna put it into here and take the label off. So that's an option if you don't wanna order extra junk from Amazon, you wanna reuse things. All right, so this next one is gonna be a brownie mix. So we're gonna do one and a quarter cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, two thirds of a cup of cocoa powder, and then two cups of white sugar. So this is the brownie mix. I just wrote on there what you add. So it's one cup of melted butter, three eggs, and a tablespoon of vanilla. This next one is like a bisquick mix or like an all-purpose mix or whatever that you can make biscuits or pot pie topping or whatever. So um, it doesn't need to be stored in the refrigerator because there's butter in it. But again, it's pretty simple and it just uses these ba basic ingredients. I'm gonna start with two and a half cups of all-purpose flour two tablespoons of baking powder, one tablespoon of white sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. Sift all this together. And we're gonna cut in a half a cup of cold butter. So 
So those are just some of the ideas for using up pantry staples and those basic items. Um, if you like this video and this was useful for you, let me know in the comments below and let me know if you want me to do another video like this because I've got more recipes that I found to use up those pantry basics and this was a fun video for me to do. So let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. Bye.